Hey, 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 welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It's 11 p.m. I have been a very busy bee today. I've been a very busy bee for the entirety of the bank holiday weekend. It's Easter Monday today, so it's the last day of bank holiday. I have a stack, I put a picture on Twitter, of all of the orders that I've managed to ship this weekend. It's the most that I've done in such a short period of time, but the main reason that it's actually noticeable, I've probably done the same amount in the same amount of time before, but with the post office being closed, they're all just gathering in my living room instead of the daily drop that I do to the postal box outside of the sorting office. So I've been very, very busy. Today I made some body butters. I edited and uploaded my Illumicrate unboxing. I packaged another bunch of orders. I'm about to start editing last week's vlog at 11 o'clock at night because I just, I haven't even made a start because I haven't even made a start on it yet but I have also finished a book today. So last week when I left you I was 200 out of 300 pages into Maybe Now by Colleen Hoover. This is the second book in the Maybe series. The first book follows Sydney and Ridge. Sydney is a college student, she's a music major and she lives with her friend and roommate. Every night at 8pm she goes out onto her balcony and there is a boy across the complex on his balcony playing his guitar. Now one day the boy notices that Sydney is singing along to lyrics even though he himself is not singing any lyrics and so he gives her his number and asks her to text him the lyrics that she's made up because he writes songs for his brother's band and he's having a little bit of writer's block. So those two are communicating pretty frequently through text when Sydney finds out that her boyfriend is actually cheating on her with her roommate so naturally she needs to get out of the place where she lives and she ends up staying with the boy across the complex and they start to grow closer as they bond over music and write music together. So this is the sequel. I have read the first book and the novella, I think it was last month, and this is the second book that wraps up the story arcs. It was published on Wattpad, so it's not a traditionally published book. I don't remember if the first book was, I think it was, but it is a Wattpad book and I'm pretty sure it was written just for fans, pretty much, for the cohorts. The characters were talking in circles all the time. It felt like they were creating problems just for the sake of there being some sort of storyline or some sort of angst in this book. The problems that they were creating were a little bit out of character because they are in a little bit of a unique situation but they all knew about this unique situation and they're now having negative reactions to things that are going on even though they all kind of agreed to be in this situation. Aside from that I do have a couple of issues with Colleen Hoover's writing and I know when I've been reading her books recently for you guys I have been slowly noticing what it is and I just feel like she does overwrite a little bit. She over explains what is going on. For example there's deaf representation in this book and the character who is deaf knows sign language to communicate with their friends but whenever they have a lot to say they usually text and then if they have a lot to say like a lot a lot then they grab their laptop because it's faster to type that way so every time the character would pull out their phone because they wanted to say quite a bit. It would say, I pulled out my phone because I knew this person was texting me. This meant that they had a lot to say. And it's like, this is the second book. I'm like on page 250 of the second book. I know if they're pulling out their phone that that means they have a lot to say. Like I do not need to be told every single time. So at the end of the day, I did give this two stars, but it does have representation in it that I definitely appreciated. As I said, there is deaf representation in here. And there is also representation for characters who are living with long-term illnesses slash diseases as there is one character in here who has cystic fibrosis and also diabetes. There were as well, there were four perspectives in this book and two of them I liked. I really liked the perspectives of Maggie and Jake who were, well Maggie was a side character in the first book, Jake didn't exist. And then the other perspectives are the main characters, Sydney and Ridge. And I just felt like Sydney and Ridge's character arc had come to an end. It didn't need any more, but I did really enjoy the perspective of Maggie and Jake and what was going on with them. I do just generally really like the side characters in this book. Ridge and Sydney are a little bit tame for what I like from Colleen Hoover, I would say. This is a lot less angsty and dramatic than I usually like to read from her. And so it's definitely not my favourite series, but you know, it was a fun read. Definitely not my favourite Colleen Hoover. Obviously I gave it two stars. You win some, you lose some. So that was my prompt for Herbology for the Elves Magical Readathon checked off, which was to read a book beginning with M. And also for Bookopoly, I had that down for the prompt to read an ebook or an audiobook and I did read an ebook copy of this. So now that that's over with, I have not started a book since I finished that earlier today because I've just 
oh fucking hell not again so since i finished that one i have not started another book yet i've just got to a point in the evening where i can even think about what i'm going to be reading next although like i said i am going to be doing some editing not a chance in hell i'm going to get all of my vlog edited today i'm going to have to do some of it in the morning so i think i'll probably edit for around an hour and then go and get in bed and read but the book that i'm going to be picking up is blood air by emily wenzow this is a book that was kindly gifted to me by linda so thank you so much linda for this one i'm glad that i finally get to read it i don't know too much about this one aside from that it is an anastasia retelling which is a story that i really love i have not read a retelling yet i think i own three but i haven't read any of them but i'm very excited i have heard good things about this although i have not actually heard that many reviews seeing as a lot of people were really excited for the release of this the plot of this what little i know of it is that we follow a princess who has blood magic she is framed for her father's murder i believe so she escapes and teams up with this criminal or con man and they have to clear her name together i guess so very excited to read this one for the Elves magical readathon this is in for astronomy which is a book that you have to read mainly when it's dark outside so i'm finally starting this now while it is actually dark outside because what i've been finding is that i actually really want to read this but whenever i'm about to start a new book it's daylight and i want to read immediately so i can't read this one and then for bookopoly this one was specifically selected for me via a chance card so this is what i'm going to be reading because i can only really read this in the dark i will probably be picking up another book to read alongside it but at the moment i'm not sure what that's going to be so i will let you know probably tomorrow if i do end up doing that hey so i received this this morning i have no idea what this is it does feel like a book but it's not from amazon my amazon wish list is still privated at the moment it isn't from waterstones i don't think it's from a publisher because the stationery on the labels normally has the publisher's name on it and not many people have my home address so i'm really really confused what this is watch it not be a book watch it be something that i've ordered for my candles i don't know the anticipation of this has been killing me it is around 2 30 in the afternoon now i've spent the entirety of my morning getting last week's vlog edited and then I went for a shower because I felt really really disgusting and had some lunch but this has honestly been killing me. I'm excited to finally find out watch this be like really unexciting. Okay it is a book. It's Burn by Patrick Ness. Okay, so I did actually kind of request this. So this came from Walker Books UK. I am on their review list. This is a review copy of Patrick Ness's next book, which is called Burn. I have only read one book by Patrick Ness so far, which is A Monster Calls, but I do also own the first two books in the Chaos Walking trilogy, More Than This and The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I don't know if I'm gonna be a fan of Patrick Ness when I've read more of his books, but this book does have a dragon in it. So when Walker Books reached out, to me and asked if I would like a copy of this to review. I said yes because you know I love me a dragon. So on the cover it just says how does the world end? It ends in fire. Oh it's also historical. On a cold Sunday evening in early 1957 Sarah Dewhurst waited with her father in the parking lot of the Chevron gas station for the dragon he'd hired to help on the farm. This dragon Casimir has more to him than meets the eye. He has arrived at the farm because of a prophecy. A prophecy that involves a deadly assassin, a cult of dragon worshippers, two FBI agents and somehow Sarah Dewhurst herself. So wow okay this is released on the 7th of May so I need to read this right at the beginning of May because there's no way that I can read this this month. Is it the 7th of May when it's released? Yeah 7th of May 2020. I mean the release date might be altered with the lockdown and stuff but at the moment the release date for this is set for the 7th of May so you can definitely expect me to be reading this right at the beginning of May no matter what is going on. I need to read this at the beginning of May. I'm very interested to see what the actual setting of this book is going to be because it's set in 1957 it seems to be a contemporary fantasy in well a historical fantasy i guess that's set in the real world because it says the dewhurst family live in washington and only poor people have to resort to hiring dragons to help them out but i've never encountered dragons in an urban fantasy before that's a little bit too high fantasy normally for a contemporary or historical fantasy setting so i'm definitely intrigued and thank you so much to walker books for sending this my way and also for leading me to have a very confusing morning filled with intrigue. So I read 48 pages of Blood Air last night. I was really not in a reading mood. I was reading for two hours but I wasn't actually. I was scrolling through my phone. I haven't read a lot of that. I can't really tell you much more about the plot at this time because I'm still in the very early stages of the book. I haven't picked up a book to read in the daytime yet so once again 
I can't give you any information on what that's going to be. I do suspect it is going to be the first book in the Books of Earthsea, which is just here, which will just be the first 130 pages of that massive book that I have to read because I am co-hosting Le Guin Along, which is a read-along hosted by Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction for the entire Books of Earthsea series. So I may get a start on that. It may be a good idea for me to read that alongside something else because Blood Air is actually written not simply, but it's not as dense as I thought it was going to be. So it's going to be a fast to read than I anticipated and even though I do only have to read 130 pages of the books of Earthsea I have heard from the people in the Le Guin Along discord that it's a little bit slower than I anticipated so I think those two will balance themselves out nicely. So I'm in the process of tidying the reading room. I've just taken all of these things off here so that I can clean the surface and I just encountered this guy. He is enormous and I'm not really sure what to do about him. I'm home alone, Curtis isn't here to save me, but I need to take these off here so that I can clean the surface. I'm just gonna stand around and be scared and not know what to do about this little guy. 15 minutes later. I tried to catch him in a box and now he's awake. So um, I'm in even worse a predicament than I was before. Yo, so I have fallen quite considerably behind on my Owl's TBR the last couple of days. So I broke out one of my power-up books, which was Children of the Whales Volume 4 by Abby Umida. This is a manga. I read the entirety of this today to give myself a little bit of a boost. However, it did not make much of a difference because it is currently 9pm and to be back on track, I still need to read another 114 pages of something today. So Children of the Whales is an older young adult manga series that follows a young boy called Shakuro who is the archivist on something called the Mud Whale. Now the Mud Whale is a floating island that floats along on something called the Sea of Sand and it is very isolated. The people of the Mud Whale have never met any other humans aside from the people that reside on the Mud Whale. Quite often when they are just you know sailing along they will pass another island and they send scouts out to go and gather supplies and then one time when this happens they find an injured girl and the whole world blows open pretty much because like I said they thought that they were the only humans to ever exist. This is a fantasy manga as well. We do have some magic in here. There are two types of people, the marked and the unmarked, and the marked people have abilities that are controlled by emotions and the unmarked people don't, but the downside of having these abilities is that you don't live very long. So it has been a while since I've read a volume of this manga. I haven't read a single one yet in 2020. This is the first one and I gave it three stars. I think one of the things that I like the most about this series is the isolation aspect because as well as this being a fantasy you also have not necessarily unreliable narrators but the narrators the main characters in this story don't know very much they've lived a very closeted life and so part of the fun for me is kind of puzzling out how much of the wider world is actually like our own and how much is fantasy because with having such isolated people as your main perspectives in this world you're not getting most of the story like you're piecing it together as they're piecing it together shall we say this manga as well is a little bit gory. It's a lot more brutal than I expected it to be. The original reason that I picked up this series is because I absolutely love the art. It is absolutely stunning throughout even though the interior is black and white and I really like the juxtapositioning of this really cutesy detailed manga art style with some of the brutality of the story in here. One of the volumes I have read in the past is pretty much just a cover to cover massacre. Definitely not what I expected when I went into this series. So the reason I gave this three stars 
has is that this is the end of a story arc I guess. For the last couple of volumes there has been an event ongoing and this volume wrapped up that event. So it's definitely been one of the more action packed ones and I prefer the ones where we are discovering more about the wider world and why these people are on the mud whale, what the mud whale means and looking into the magic and stuff. So I did give this three stars but I do still really love this series and I would recommend it and I will 100% be continuing. This is on my old magical readers on TBR. It is on for Defence Against the Dark Arts which is to read a book that is set on the sea or by the coast which I always use this for sea prompts because it is set on the sea of sand even though the sea is not made out of water. And fun fact this is the first time I have ever fulfilled a Defence Against the Dark Arts prompt. I don't know what it is. I think the first year that I did the Earls the only prompt that I didn't complete was Defence Against the Dark Arts and I don't remember what Earls I got last year but I definitely didn't get them all and Defence Against the Dark Arts wasn't one of them. So yeah I'm happy that I have Defence Against the Dark Arts now because it is one of the more popular ones that everyone tends to go for and I've never passed it but now I have. And then for my Bacopoli TBR I use this one to fulfill the prompt to read a manga or a comic and yeah that's one more owl that ticks off my TBR. I think I'm at five in total now. However I have read six books this month because I did read Wrestler Slumber when I shouldn't have done but providing I read another around 115 pages today I should stay on track and I should still finish every book I need to for my owls which would be great. So I'm also still reading Blood Air. I've left it upstairs. The thing with it being the book that I read at night, it's normally the book that I read in bed, which means that I never have it with me when I'm doing vlog updates. I'll tell you a little bit more about that one. Maybe tomorrow. I know I keep saying that, but I feel weird not holding it. I am enjoying it so far. The writing style is not my favourite. It's an okay slash good writing style. It's just not to my particular taste. There's nothing wrong with the writing style, it's just not my favourite, shall we say it's good, but it doesn't really stand out in any way, I would say. And even at around 115 pages in, the plot, I still don't have a good grasp of what it's about. I mean, it's an Anastasia retelling. We have the Lost Princess, we meet the criminal mastermind guy right in the first chapter, and those two have been together for the entirety of the book, but I wouldn't say that we've got into a lot of plot yet, because I feel like we're just at the point where we're going to start to go into the plot. We've had like minor reveals so far and everything up to this point has kind of been exposition. So that's where I'm up to with my reading. I don't really have anything else to report. I need to film my mid-month wrap-up. It is quite late. It's probably around 9.30 now. I really just cannot be bothered filming but my mid-month wrap-up does have to go up tomorrow and I have other stuff to do in the morning so I can't both film and edit tomorrow. So I've got to go get it done and I suppose I'm gonna go do that. and I love it um, and so I really enjoyed this. I liked the characters a lot. Elias could definitely, I would definitely date someone like that. So from the title of today's video we're gonna be talking about the books that I read in March. Now I'm not gonna linger on the intro too long because obviously this is just a wrap-up of what I read in the month of March but I am going to say I didn't read a whole lot. Zhao and honestly I have been putting this off because I just don't really have anything to say about this. I'm on page 228 I think the last time I checked in with you I was around the page 100 mark maybe just under that and I said that I was enjoying it okay so far. I don't really make any comments I don't think I do anyway on the first like 100 pages of a fantasy book when I don't know anything about the world because even if I don't understand everything that's going on I'm not really far enough in the book to make any judgment on it when it's a fantasy series but I'm past the halfway point now. The way that I can describe my experience of this is that I'm just disinterested. I'm halfway through. I don't even know if I have been focusing enough or if I've been interested enough in this book when I've been reading it to even give you guys a synopsis. I'm gonna try. I'm really gonna try. So this is, I'm not sure if it's adult or young adult. I believe in the UK it's sold as adult but some books that are sold as adult in the UK are sold as young adult in the US. I would say that based on the writing 
style it reads very young adult however there is a lot of gore in the blood magic aspect which make me believe that it could be adult i don't know i should probably look into it it's a fantasy story it could be read by young adults or adults so this is a loose anastasia retelling it follows a princess called anastasia mikhailov who is an affinite which is somebody who has an affinity now there are plenty of affinities in this world the princess's particular affinity is over blood and apparently nobody else has an affinity for blood so she's special this way so when she was a kid she accidentally killed a bunch of people with this affinity and because of that she was subjected to almost like aversion therapy essentially her father tried to cure her by hiring somebody to pour poison down her throat to try and purge this thing from her and as you can imagine that that did not go really well so Anastasia's father died I think it's a year prior to the start of this novel and she was blamed for his death however she did see the man who actually killed her father so she has now made it her mission to find this man so she can then return home to the palace where her brother is currently the emperor so this book starts out where she is in the prison cell of Ramzan Quiktong who is a very notorious criminal he's legendary he's apparently really really good at being a criminal and she is there to ask him if he has any information on the man that killed her father because Ramson Quiktong is known for being able to find and track absolutely anybody so of course she is a dumb bitch and she gets herself into an altercation with Ramson which results in him escaping and they end up going on the run together they strike up a bargain that Ramson will help her find this man and then after that she will use her affinity to help him with seeking revenge on the people who have wronged him well, that's the plot there's also a another character in here who's very prominent she's a little girl called May and she's also an affinity and her affinity is to earth and Anastasia has kind of assumed guardianship of this child I'm just bored I'm bored and I'm disappointed because I was really looking forward to this I really thought that I would love it I really love Anastasia as a story as a historical event that happened as a legend and I don't even see the retelling in this book so the legend of Anastasia the story of Anastasia in the real life is that there was a big siege or revolution thing in the palace all of the Romanovs were killed Anastasia was not found among the dead so people assumed that she was alive I do believe that the myth that Anastasia escaped was disproven I think that she was killed with the rest of her family but at the time they didn't know where she was buried and they thought that she had escaped so then there was this big romanticized thing where people thought that she was still alive and that she was the lost princess in the animated version of Anastasia which is of course very romanticized same thing happens the entire Romanov family fall I think apart from her grandmother and she does actually manage to escape and the movie is about this man Dimitri who who is a con artist he's down on his luck he's poor and there is a reward for Anastasia's return so he has it in his mind that he is going to find this random girl train her to be Anastasia in such a convincing manner that it convinces her own grandmother so that he will get the reward however unbeknownst to him he just happens to stumble upon the real Anastasia who remembers nothing of her birthright and her heritage and then he falls in love with her so that is both the real historical story of Anastasia and also the extremely romanticized story of Anastasia and I cannot see either of them in here aside from that we have a princess who is no longer residing in the palace with the remnants of her family and the setting is inspired by Russia. Those are the only similarities that I see to Anastasia. We have the con man so we have the Dimitri type character if this is supposed to be a retelling of the romanticized version of Anastasia but he's not looking to return her he just wants to use her for her power. It's, it's supposed to be an Anastasia retelling but literally it is just a young adult fantasy plot set in a country that is inspired by Russia. That's it. That That is the Anastasia thing. Now later on it could turn into more of an Anastasia retelling but I just feel like without the setup being the setup of Anastasia it's not an Anastasia retelling. I don't know why I'm getting so worked up on this. I don't even necessarily dislike this book. I'm literally just ambivalent and <laughs> I think the thing that is annoying me the most is that I was promised an Anastasia retelling and I really don't see it. Obviously people have different interpretations of retelling so I don't know if I'm just being a dumb bitch but at the moment I'm just not seeing it. I don't 
don't like Amelie Wenzel's writing style, once again, very typical young adult. It's not that it's bad, the writing style isn't bad. I just feel like it's lacking something. I'm just not engaged at all when I'm reading it. I don't care about any of the characters. I don't care about the plot. I don't even like the love interest. I don't even like Ramzan. I don't dislike him, again. I just don't care and I don't know if it's because I have to read this at night time so I'm only reading it in bed when I'm quite tired but it's just not holding my interest. It's really fast paced as well. The chapters are only around 15 pages. The font is kind of big for a hardback and the writing is not complex so it's really easy to read. I could get through it quickly if I wasn't putting it down after every chapter. I was going to DNF this aside from I do kind of want to follow through mainly because I've already DNF'd a book this month and I've already invested like three days into only getting halfway in this book. This has put me behind on my L so I'm committed to finishing it but it'll probably be three stars at most. So after that little bit of a rant that wasn't even supposed to be a rant I have picked up another book yesterday for my daylight read which is Aurora Burning by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is the brand new science fiction release, the second book in the Aurora cycle. The release date for this is my birthday, the 5th of May, so I need to read this before it's released so that I can hopefully get a review out. I feel weird doing like a single review for the second book in a series, so I'm probably going to hopefully remember enough about Aurora Burning to make a full review video on it and review the first two books in the series in a video that will be going up on on this book's release day. So the plot of this one, it is a young adult sci-fi. I read the first book, I think it was only last month. This follows Squad 312 that is led by Tyler Jones. Now Tyler Jones is incredibly amazing at absolutely everything that he does and he is set to finish at the top of his class in the Aurora Academy which is like a space flight cadet school. However he's late to his graduation ceremony because he is rescuing a human girl from a 200 year old wreckage of a spaceship and because he arrives late. He is not the first to pick from the graduating class like he was supposed to be. He ends up with the people that nobody else chose. Now there are a couple of people who are loyal to him. His sister joins his squad as does his best friend who are both really good at their particular fields. However the other three members of his team are the people that nobody wanted. So squad 312 do embark on their very first mission. But unbeknownst to them Aurora who is the girl that Tyler saved has stowed away in the ship and she has some powers that even she has no idea that she had, which actually tie into a war that started hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So Squad 312 end up going on this wild goose chase to find out what's going on with Aurora and what all of this means. So I did start this yesterday, but I only read 20 pages of it. I'm already on page 102 and it's only just gone midday. So it's definitely not me, I think. The reason that I've been reading so slowly I think it is definitely blood air because I am flying through this. I really loved Aurora Rising. I gave it four stars. This was kindly sent to me by One World Publications to review for you guys so thank you so much to One World for sending me this one. This book, this series is just peak J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and it's so extra. If you've read The Illuminate Files and you like The Illuminate Files then there is a good chance that you will like this series. It is a little bit cheesy, it is a little bit extra just like The Illuminate Illuminate Files is. However, with the Illuminate Files, you do have that mixed media format that kind of gives it a little bit more, I don't want to say depth, but gives it a little bit something extra. Whereas this is just, it is literally extra. The best way to describe this is just that it's extra. Like we have epic spaceship chase scenes. There are ridiculous costumes. Everybody can be a little bit caricature-y. There's tons of sarcasm, tons of one-liners. Some of the characters are pretty shallow. They do kind of all fit into different archetypes and they do kind of play on that in parts. But yeah, if you've, if you've read the Illuminate Files and enjoyed it, it's the same kind of story. It's definitely the same kind of characters. It's just in standard written format as opposed to mixed media. But I really enjoy this series and it's not like me to enjoy something so campy. But Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman just do it in a way that I really love. I would say actually, if you like science fiction and you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you will like this book because the energy from the characters in here, the dialogue and their 
relationships is definitely the same kind of campy that Buffy is. Even down to the fact, actually, I noticed in Aurora Rising that one of the characters says that they are five by five, and if you are a Buffy stan, you will know where that phrase originates from. So this is what I'll be reading for most of the day, and then I'll pick this back up at night time. I'm currently behind on candle orders because I'm waiting for my wax to arrive. Completely my fault because when I ordered it last week, I forgot that it was bank holiday over the weekend. So I should have ordered it like a good two or three days earlier than I did because of the extra delay of having a four day weekend. But I didn't, but my wax should hopefully arrive tomorrow and I will spend my weekend getting back on track. But for the rest of the day, I have to go out and get food now. Curtis and I are both gonna go out. We're gonna hit different shops so we can be out as little as possible and grab some food because I'm out of essentials like bread and I'm really hungry. It's lunchtime and I have no bread. Ugh. Whoa, who put the kettle on? Why is the kettle on? It's part of the show, it's smoke. <laughs> Okay guys, so it is 11 p.m. My coffee machine arrived this afternoon, but I didn't get time to set it up earlier. So it was either we do this now at 11 o'clock or I stumble around in the morning looking like absolute trash while I try and make myself a cup of coffee with a machine that I've never used before. So this is a Swan Retro Espresso machine. This is not sponsored. This is a birthday gift from me to me because the one thing that I wanted when I moved was a coffee machine and I asked literally everybody Body to buy me a coffee machine for Christmas and I didn't get one so I bought myself one for my birthday. It's like a cafe machine but like a tiny one so it has a little filter thing here and a little pump for steaming the milk to make a latte. I've literally never had a coffee machine before. Nobody in my family has had a coffee machine before. I don't have a fucking clue what I'm doing but we're gonna try. Right, instructions. I got this. What does this go? Pick that up. I just don't know. I thought this was a plastic fork. <laughs> so fresh. Doing so poses a scalding electric shock or fire risk. <laughs> I pulled the whole tank off and then snorted. Right, what's step one? Depends what you're making. I don't know what I'm making. I don't even know what to do, how to use. Right, my steam knob, my knob is different. How do I know if this is off? I guess I don't, I might get burned by steam. Is this right? No. You shouldn't be forcing it in any sense. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> there we go, we did it. Oh my god, temperature. Oh my god, it's dribbling. <laughs> you need to focus on those instructions. You need to stop filming me for no reason. Bad ground coffee to coffee filter, which I think is that, with measuring spoon. You've been really distracting. <laughs> Premium Bones Coffee Scaramel Corn from Elko. Take a whiff. That's not a take a whiff. Exactly. No, you're they supposed have to, to be go smelling in. it. They have to smell no, it. they don't. Oh, it's so not immersive. This isn't make a coffee with me. This is watch me make a coffee. Yep. Make a coffee and go to bed just doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on here, fuck. Uh, like we're shooting more it. Do you want me to try? I don't know. Do you know how to use coffee machines? I know how to use machines. In general. I have a way with machines. Did it! There we go. This is where I just slap my hands in my hands. Why'd you have to twist it like that? That's not right. It is. What's it's this for then? To make lattes. Okay, so that's a, that's a stout spout. <laughs> Your mum's a spout. Oh my god, it's perfect. It's beautiful. No, no, we need milk. How do you put the milk in? Kind of looks like a bum. No, it actually looks like a bum. Milk. Where do I know what the milk's for? I made a motherfucking latte. Are we ready for the taste test? <sighs> I've not put sugar in it or anything. Um. <laughs> the sugar wasn't wine. 
That was pretty wine thing. I can have a spoon. She's strong. No, she's weak. She needs some work. But I made a latte. It wasn't all I thought it would be. Your turn. Did you get any liquid or just foam? Half foam, half liquid. <laughs> How'd you feel? Good. Is it good? Yeah. It's got that coffee to it. <laughs> oh, oh. Tastes better when you get rid of the foam. Yeah. Ow! You just tang the teeth on them. Mm. Oh. So, while I'm here, it is 11.40 now, drinking coffee at bedtime. The Raidathon starts at midnight. <laughs> The Readathon is a 24 hour readathon that is hosted by my friend Jade over at Jade Reads. I will be participating, I don't know to what extent yet, it depends whether my wax turns up in the morning, but my aim for the Readathon is to finish both Blood Air and also Aurora Burning. I'm still wherever I said I was this morning in Blood Air, I haven't read any of it yet because it has to be dark outside. And Aurora Burning, I think I'm around page 150, so a long way to go. Wish me luck, but I'm gonna go and get in bed when I finish my coffee and read some of blood air. So it's 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. As I told you last night, I am participating in the Raidathon. There are, what, nine hours left, I guess? I haven't been solely dedicating myself to reading. My wax was supposed to arrive today and it didn't. So I have put out a thing on Twitter and also Instagram that I'm really sorry about how late I am now at with dispatching orders. Like I said, I ordered this wax a week and a half ago and it's just not here yet. But fingers crossed it should arrive on Monday but what that does mean is that I do have a little bit of extra time today that I didn't think I'd have though so I have been doing some reading I'm now on page 265 of Aurora Burning I still really love it it's like like I said the other day the only way that I can describe this book is that it's extra the way that the characters just lean into these stereotypes and it's I don't know because I don't normally like fun stories like this I don't know it gets across the feeling of more serious books but in a really light campy way and Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman are absolutely excellent at writing found families and I really really love Squad 312. So I'm on page 265, I have read 115-ish pages of this today and last night after midnight when I went to bed I read 48 pages I think of Blood Air. So I've read around 160 pages in total during the Raidathon which is my daily page count to be fair. So considering it's only 3pm and I did a hefty sleep last night, I slept until 11 a.m. this morning. I'm actually doing pretty well with that. I am going to take a break from reading now to film my video for tomorrow, honestly, up until around 30 minutes ago. I still had no idea what video I was gonna be posting tomorrow, but I have come up with an idea, so I'm going to pull the books I need for it, go get changed out of my, this is like my world's comfiest hoodie, I think I had it on a few days ago, go get changed, film that video, and the way I've kind of been reading is I've been doing 50 page bursts, so when I film my video, I will read another 50 pages of this and then probably edit that video and then that's all done and leaves me with tomorrow free to edit this vlog, which I think is actually going to be pretty long. I'm scared. So it's 11 p.m. It is the final hour of the Raidathon. I'm on page 305 of Aurora Burning. Jade has just started a one hour sprint, so I'm going to see how much of this I can read in an hour and then I will check back in with you when I finished and let you know how much I read for the readathon in total. Hey, so the hour is up, it is midnight, it's now technically Sunday, the readathon is over. I'm now on page 360 of Aurora Burning, so I've read 210-ish pages of this today, combined with the 48 pages of Blood Air that I read last night after midnight, so that's 
258 pages for the Raidathon, which isn't bad considering I haven't read all day. I've both filmed and edited and uploaded a video today. So I'm, I'm considering that a success. I didn't do too badly. This is so good. <laughs> this is better than Aurora Rising. I'm not sure whether it's because when I was reading Aurora Rising, I wasn't familiar with the characters. So it took me a little bit longer to get into the story. But now that I know all of the characters, I am really, really loving this. I just finished a chapter that I thought was really gonna hurt me, but I think I'm okay. I am a little bit worried about the end of this. I think it's going to end badly, which, you know, I thought that at some point everything would end up being okay in the series as a whole, but now I'm not so sure. And one of the characters in this isn't doing so good. I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit worried, but I'm really enjoying this and I'm flying through it. This book is 495 pages long. So I have 145 pages left. To be fair, I could go to bed and finish this right now, but if I don't make steady progress on Blood Air, I'm just not going to finish it because I'm really just not enjoying it. So I think I'm going to put the finishing touches to the video I've uploaded to YouTube, get it scheduled for tomorrow, get in bed and read some of Blood Air, and then I will finish this tomorrow and let you guys know what I thought of it. But I love it. I don't think the end of this is going to ruin my feelings for it because Gia Kristoff and Amy Kaufman tend to end their books on really dramatic emotional moments. But I will be back tomorrow to give you my full thoughts on this and of course thank you to the wonderful Jade for hosting this 24 hour readathon because I've actually read quite a lot and I'm very impressed. So earlier today I did actually manage to finish Aurora Burning by Gia Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. The ending of this, it was exactly as I anticipated, was just just this big emotional like high action thing and to be honest I did feel like throwing the book. They just don't seem to be pulling any punches with this series. However I do have a theory for the third book. I don't want to share it with you guys because obviously I've read a review copy so you guys haven't even read Aurora Burning yet but I will say I think that it involves time travel based on some of the things that happened in this one. I really love all of the characters in this. With comparing this to Illuminae I would definitely say that Illuminae has a better plot and to be fair the Illuminae files are cheesy. This is very cheesy in the dialogue as I've mentioned in this vlog but I just love how extra it is you know. I would say that I do prefer the characters in this to Illuminae and I do think the reason for that is that we follow this squad exclusively. We're not just following two members per book so we do get to spend more time with them. For criticisms of this book the romance elements are okay. I like the flow in and the banter between the squad mates but there is a relationship that develops through this series and I feel like it's a little bit rushed to start off with. I don't think that Amy Kaufman or Jay Kristoff are the best at writing romance. The romance was okay in here. I did like the pairing. One of the characters in particular is one of my favourite characters in this series but it's not the thing that they're best at. Like it's good but it's not amazing and the one main criticism I have of this is that quite far into this book there is a reveal and the reveal is so stupid like it's something that I have known pretty much from the beginning of the first book because to me it is just so glaringly obvious it's about one of the backstories of one of the characters but as soon as this character was introduced in the first book I knew there was something going on there and then as we get further through both of the books I've been waiting for this to come up in conversation because to me it just seemed so obvious that this was the thing and in this book it turned out to be a big reveal that was a really big deal some of the characters reactions to it really really disappointed me and I kind of see why it happened to make the plot go where it did but I just felt that it was so unnecessary in creating dramas for drama's sake. To me as well the characters did not react reasonably to this reveal. Obviously I can't say anything about it, I can't tell you what it is but that would be the only real negative I have of this book. Was not happy with that whole thing going down. Despite that though I gave this book five stars. I do feel like that whole thing is going to come to some sort of resolution. Especially Especially if my theory comes true for the third book and then it will all be a little bit more excusable I guess. I'm still not happy about it but this book is incredibly fast paced. The first chapter of this is an action scene. The action scenes just keep on coming throughout. I love how extra it is. I love how it kind of leans into every stereotype to create this comical action packed story. I absolutely love the phone family dynamic in here. I love all of these characters and the way they interact together. It's really hard for me to explain why I love this 
this series because I have mentioned before that the dynamics and the cheesiness and the banter does not always work for me but in this series it does. I'm thinking at the moment I'm thinking of once and what's it called once and future was it called once and future that book by amy rose capetta and corey MacArthur? i really did not like that book and that was kind of campy and very cheesy i think that jay christoph and amy kaufman are very good at getting that vibe across i feel like once and future it was just going too far and it was very clearly adults pretending to be down with the kids whereas this felt a lot more natural i would say there are some elements of cheese in it i would also say that this is incredibly compelling i don't remember when i started this i think it was friday i have pretty much not been able to put this down there was one tiny portion of it that lagged that was just past the halfway point but aside from that this was incredibly dynamic and compelling so this was a five star read this is my fourth five star read of the month i have no idea what's happening i don't think i had any five stars last month and for the Oz magical readathon this one fulfills the prompt for arithmancy which is to read a book outside of your favorite genre sci-fi is my second favorite genre and for bookopoly this was to read a sci-fi. My other book that I was currently reading, Blood Air by Emily Wenzhou. I'm not going to go into my feelings too much on this at the moment, but I am on page 294. My main issue I'm having with this now is when I pick it up, I'm enjoying it okay, but I have almost no desire to pick it up. I still kind of stand by what I said about it not really being a Anastasia retelling and not really getting those vibes. However, I would say this is a Dimitri retelling. I'm seeing a lot of the characters of Dimitri in the character of Ramzan in here but sadly I'm seeing almost none of Anastasia. <laughs> so I did want to finish this today. I have 160-ish pages left I believe. It's unlikely that I am going to get to finish it because I am going to make a start on editing this vlog when I finish this update and I'll probably only read another 50 or so pages of this tonight. This one for the Oz Magical Readathon is for the Prompt Astronomy which is to read a book mostly when it's dark outside and now that I'm at the page 3 300 mark after tonight I'm going to be at around 350 so I am going to just continue to read this now just to get it done really because I have already mostly read this book when it's dark outside but sadly I will not be able to wrap it up in this vlog and I'll have to carry this one over but that is about it for this week's vlog I hope you have enjoyed it if you've made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you did like it and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no